You know, in many ways, living green simply means revisiting simpler times, and smoke-cured country hams have been a tasty tradition in Tennessee since pioneer days. Long known as Mount Juliet's ham man, Ed Rice of Rice's Country Hams is now passing this old-fashioned method of curing meats down to his son-in-law, Scott. Every January, this family business begins hanging hams in preparation for the next holiday season, preserving tradition and full country flavor all along the way. My, my father bought the store in 1933 and ran it as a country grocery store. And in the early 50s, he said that the faster the automobiles ran, the slower the country grocery business got. He had the staple items here, but people wanted to go to Piggly Wiggly or H.G. Hills and, you know, get different variety. And he said he had to do something to make a living. We got used to uh, uh, eating and uh, wearing shoes in the wintertime. You know, back then, kids didn't wear shoes in the summertime, just went barefooted. But uh, so that's, he had to do something to make a living, and he started curing country hams. Uh, first year, he cured 50 in a chicken coop out here in the, in the blacksmith shop out here. And somebody stole, had them in here, and what he did, he hung them up on the front of the store, and the tourists would come by and buy them. And somebody broke in the store and stole all but two of them, and they were hidden up under the shelf over there. So the next year, he did not have enough money to buy fresh hams. So he set out a year. So the next year he put down 75. And that's how it, but it's how it started growing and to its present level. I'm Scott Dabbs. I'm Ed Rice Jr.'s uh, son-in-law. Uh, me and my wife run the business now. Uh, uh, behind me you'll see that the, uh, the building where the, the, where the hams originally were cured, uh, it was a little old milk truck. Uh, and uh, when, when Ed Rice Sr. started this business, that is, uh, that's where he, he started curing the hams. He used a little milk truck there. As the business grew, uh, around 1955, Ed had to build a, a smokehouse to accommodate the number of hams he was doing at the time, and that's what's uh, right over here. Well, uh, a country ham is the one that has been uh, put in salt, and what, what, what it does is preserve the hams. Uh, the, the salt goes into the meat and pushes out the moisture and sets up a condition that bacteria cannot exist. And uh, that's, that's how it got started. And the way they say that that got started was uh, the pilgrims came over and they were over on the east coast and they were being going to be raided by the Indians, and they knew they were coming. So they had killed hogs, and to hide their meat, they buried it on the beaches over there. And when they came back, they found out that their meat wasn't spoiled, and the salt in the, in the salt had uh, preserved it. This here, where we're standing in our curing room. Uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of places have, have several different rooms that they move hams from one stage to the next stage to the next stage, uh, whereas we use the same room to do the whole process. Uh, and that, that comes by way of using the temperatures outside. When we first start salting the meat, it needs to be cold outside because we have to keep the, keep the meat at 40 degrees. So that process is done the end of December, 1st of January, uh, Early, early February still they'll be in, in the salt. It takes eight pounds of salt per hundred pounds of meat to properly cure a ham. If you get more than that, it's too salty. If you get in less than that, it don't cure properly. And when we take them out of salt, basically a month later, we wash them off and give them a good bath and clean them up and make them look good. And then we hang them up in the smokehouse. Uh, and then as the, as the weather starts changing and starts warming up a little, uh, that, that helps our hams go through what's called a, a equalization period. And uh, they will stay there to where we hang them originally until we get them down in the fall of the year and start checking 
to make sure that they're good. Now, 98% of my hams will take a perfect cure. Our quality control is simple. It's a, it's a stainless steel ice pick, and if a ham doesn't take, the per, uh, doesn't take a perfect cure, if it, it's gonna be at these, his hip joint or his knee joint. And we can probe that and pull it out and we smell of it. And we know the, what the aroma that we get on this pick is what you're gonna be getting when you cook it. You put it in the skillet and you put the heat to it and this aroma will be magnified. If it's good, it'll be wonderful when you cook it, but if it's bad, no. So it's very important. We sell a lot of hams, the whole hams. People take them out and take them everywhere. And we, we want to make sure we do everything that we can to make sure that they get a, a, a quality ham before they leave here. If a, if a ham is properly cured, somebody says, how long, they'll say, how long will this ham keep, Mr. Rice? I said, well, actually, it is preserved, and you can lay a rock down beside one of my hams, and as long as the rock is good, my ham will be good. If you have never had <coughs> a slice of my ham, you have not eaten the real thing, okay? Now, the difference in our ham and a grocery store ham is it takes us a year to it takes us a year to produce this ham. It's a lot of money invested and a lot of time involved in it, okay? And we better know what we're doing because we start putting this probe in here in the fall of the year, if it's not good, then we, you know, we're in trouble. As far as I'm concerned, being able to turn it over to the next generation is it means a whole lot because most of mine's in my rear view mirror, just like my golf game. I used to have a pretty good golf game, but it's behind me and, and I don't care anything about going over and, and unloading uh, 40,000 pounds of, of uh, meat and, and salting them down, but they do, you know, young people, they, it don't bother them. And uh, they take a lot of pride in doing what they're doing. And that's important to me that, that they have taken over and have been so successful and are so earnest in trying to accomplish the same thing that we did is to have a satisfied customer. We won a lot of ribbons and a lot of trophies at the state fair, county fair, and uh, of course that looks good, you know, media-wise, but What's more important to us, me back then and them now, is to provide our customer with the best ham that's being possibly made. Uh, so that's what it means to me.